So I'm supposed to write, what now? I don't get it. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 teen dramas that were cancelled after one season. She became paranoid and sometimes delusional. It's the first day of school, so remember the most important thing, don't get pregnant. Dad! Do you want to come to my place after school? Sure. For this list, we'll be looking at series that didn't last beyond their freshman year, but that nonetheless poignantly depicted both the challenges and joys of adolescence. In the comments, let us know what your favourite series was as a teen. Number 10. Hellcats It's a promised land where football is God. Where there's football, can cheerleaders be far behind? Inspired by author Kate Torgovnik's novel, Cheer Inside the Secret World of College Cheerleaders, Hellcats was one of the most anticipated series of the CW's 2010 fall lineup. Starring two Disney Channel teen icons, Phil of the Future's Ali Mishaka and High School Musical's Ashley Tisdale, the show took viewers behind the scenes of competitive college cheerleading. I'm sorry, did you just call me a groupie? Oh, uh, nothing personal against you, I... It doesn't get more personal than calling someone a groupie. With plenty of memorable choreography and dramatic storylines to match, Hellcats had all the makings of a surefire television hit. However, after only 22 episodes, the series lost its footing and tumbled right out of its Wednesday night time slot. I keep thinking there's... maybe there's something wrong with me. Number 9. The Secret Circle My sweet Cassie, I didn't want you to have this life. But destiny's not easy to run from. Long before she had her own Netflix series Girl Boss, Britt Robertson was brewing potions and making magic on the CW's The Secret Circle. The supernatural drama followed Robertson as a grief-stricken teen, Cassie Blake, who makes the startling discovery that she's a witch after the tragic death of her mother. Based on LJ Smith's literary series, Circle didn't take off quite the same way as another one of Smith's page-to-screen adaptations, The Vampire Diaries. Citing budgetary issues as the reason for its downfall, the series cast its last spell in the spring of 2012. All these years. I believed Isaac when he said the witches were the ones who started the fire that night. Number 8. Tower Prep Alright, I'll tell you the whole story. I could actually use your guys' help. Known mostly for its animated content, Cartoon Network's live-action series Tower Prep stood out from the rest during its 13-episode run in 2010. The show followed Ian Archer, an average teen who suddenly transported to a private school for youth with special powers. Let me go! <sighs> Fueled by a desire to return to his normal life, Archer bands together with a group of other students to find out the truth behind why they're there. Those voices aren't just human. After only a few months, the network pulled the series and fans were left hanging with few answers and a lot of questions. So who's the seventh person? You? Me? I'm not human. Number 7. 10 Things I Hate About You Mandela, who is Captain Intensity over there? Patrick Verona. People say he knows the taste of human flesh. The rom-com that launched the careers of Julia Stiles and Heath Ledger is considered a 90s teen classic. So, it seems like a no-brainer that the story would seamlessly transition from film to television. Influenced by Shakespeare's comedy The Taming of the Shrew, the half-hour-long episodes chronicled sisters Kat and Bianca as they dealt with the ups and downs of high school life, including dating, love, and relationships. What do you want? What do you mean? While it was exciting to see the beloved film live on in a new medium, the series just couldn't quite capture the magic of its source material and ultimately bid a fond farewell after its first season. Can you believe this? Nice. Number 6. The Society Who shot my sister? Why did you do that? Likened to the novel Lord of the Flies, this series featured rising star Catherine Newton as Ali Pressman, a teen living in a small town where its residents are disappearing under mysterious circumstances. I think when you do something for the first time, a part of you thinks that you're just pretending. I'm not this person, I'm just putting on the clothes. With no adult supervision, it's up to Ali and other teens to form a new society, which becomes just about as complicated as it sounds. 
The Netflix series premiered in mid-2019, and even though a second season was in the works, society became a casualty of the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic, and vanished right before fans' eyes. I don't know what you mean. You tried to kill me. Number 5. Everything Sucks What merchant of deceit has sold you such untruths? In thy sleep, when thou didst dream, thou didst chirp infidelities. This original Netflix series certainly lived up to its name during its one season stint on the streaming service. The storyline follows the rivalry between AV and drama club members as they battle to reign supreme in an American high school during the 90s. Covering topics such as sexuality, learning disorders, and drug use, the show featured a promising young ensemble. In mid-2018, however, the series was given the boot and production closed up shop. That night at the hotel, the things you said, that you thought I was perfect. Did you mean it? Never shying away from exploring some of the most awkward and cringeworthy parts of being a teen, this series proved that being 16 can be anything but sweet. The best memory I have of my mom was this one day when she took me to the county fair. Number four, Pretty Little Liars, The Perfectionists. It's okay if you're relieved that he's dead. You can admit that to me. No one else has to know. I am relieved. There's no denying that Pretty Little Liars is one of the most popular and talked about teen dramas of its generation. So when it was announced that a sequel series, The Perfectionists, was in the works, it was no surprise. The freeform series is set in the fictional school of Beacon Heights University, showing its deepest and darkest secrets, including lies and murder. What can I do to help? Unfortunately, the mystery drama was cut short after the series was canned, along with all of its secrets. Number 3. I am not okay with this. Just perfect. Teenhood is already tough as it is, but when you throw superpowers into the mix, that makes things slightly more complicated. In Netflix's half-hour dramedy, I Am Not Okay With This, its star Sophia Lillis played Sydney Novak, a teenager struggling with high school, family, and newfound superpowers. I keep losing my temper. Like everybody else. Like everybody else. I don't want to, but it just spills out. Based on a graphic novel by writer Charles Forsman, the series was chock full of dark humour, special effects, and an engaging storyline, making it seem almost bulletproof. However, despite receiving mostly positive reviews, the series was shelved as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, and fans were definitely not okay with its untimely departure. Should I be afraid? They should be afraid. Number two, my so-called life. Sometimes people fill their minds with all these stupid things, you know, to keep themselves from thinking about you know, it's really important. There's nothing easy about being a teen, and My So-Called Life took that sentiment and ran with it. Before they were award-winning actors, Claire Danes and Jared Leto starred in the teen drama centred around angsty protagonist Angela Chase as she navigated adolescent life in suburban Pennsylvania. It was kind of like driving by a horrible car accident. You just had to look. The series became well known for tackling heavy issues such as alcoholism, drug use, homophobia, and violence. It's even earned a handful of Emmy nominations, but that wasn't enough to keep the series on the air. After premiering in August of 1994, the show was put on the chopping block six months later. Although So Called's existence was short lived, it's still highly regarded as one of the best portraits of teenagehood of all time. Nothing to do, nowhere to go. I won't be sedated. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honourable mentions Twisted, an intriguing mystery thriller that was offed too soon. Do you think that I wanted to come back here? That it was my choice? It wasn't. Star-crossed. This human alien love story had potential, but fate had other plans. Huge. A group of teens attends a summer weight loss camp. Why does the time move forward and never end? Why can't I somehow become a child again? Malibu Shores. 
Aaron Spelling's soap opera was a guilty pleasure. Feels like we just left. Yeah, funny. Feels like we've been gone forever. Teenage Bounty Hunters. The comedy drama was a hit with critics, but failed to track down a larger audience. You could have rescheduled your date, Blair! Oh, yeah? You could have fake sick like that time in French class when you claimed you had alien hand syndrome, but no, as always, you went for the highest level of drama possible! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, freaks and geeks. And the stupid priest says I can't come in. <laughs> you can't wear stuff like that at church, man. Why not, man? It's church. It's supposed to forgive people there. It's hard to name a one-season series that earned more critical and public acclaim than freaks and geeks. The series from Paul Feig and Judd Apatow launched the careers of household names such as James Franco, Linda Cardellini, Seth Rogen, Jason Segel, and Busy Phillips. The story followed siblings Lindsay and Sam as they dealt with the politics of life as high schoolers in the early 80s. Probably just jealous. Lindsay, tell your brother what a beautiful body he has. Mom? Mom? Lindsay? What? After only 12 episodes, the series was cancelled despite the creators already having filmed 18 episodes. In the 20 plus years since the series was canned, its legacy has culminated in cast reunions, successful syndication, and a 2018 behind the scenes documentary. While it's sad that the series' life was cut short, its legacy proves that the plight of adolescence transcends generations. We don't have IDs, and the band's playing tonight. It's my only connection. Yeah, I don't know anybody. Wait. I think I might. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.